Hello, I'm Jim. Welcome to my workshop and my channel. As you can probably guess from my surroundings here, this is not going to be my usual photography related video. In addition to being a photographer, I'm also a woodworker. And today I want to talk fountain pens, specifically their care and maintenance, like this beehive pen. You might be here because you've purchased or been given one of my custom fountain pens made right here in my workshop. Or maybe you're just interested in fountain pens and happen to stumble, stumble across this video. Regardless, I'm glad you're here and welcome. Now today, I want to help you get a better understanding of the parts of your fountain pen. We're also going to talk about protecting it from damage, how to fill it properly without getting yourself and everything around you covered in ink. We're also going to talk about cleaning your pen, changing inks, long-term storage, and some common struggles that people experience with fountain pens. But to do that, let's leave my workshop here and let's head off into the studio. Come with me. Okay, so let's take a look at the parts of a fountain pen. So for my demonstration, I'm going to use uh, this demonstrator pen. And it's uh, designed clear so that you can actually see the workings on it. So let's take it apart and look at the different pieces. So the very first part is the cap. Then the bottom section is referred to as the barrel. Now if I take the barrel off, then uh, in here we have the nib and we have, you can see all these, uh, these uh, fins, that's the, that's the feed section. And then we have the converter and the converter is what holds the ink and it actually has a piston in it that drives the uh, ink into the feed. Now let's talk a little bit about converters because there's um, some pens use converters, some don't. So um, uh, so that's a very common style of, uh, of converter. Other pens will have uh, will use a cartridge and uh, so with the cartridge you push it into the pen and the pin in the center breaks the cartridge open and uh, that uh, provides you with your ink. I don't personally care for cartridges. They're nice in that there's really not a lot of maintenance to them. But there's a very limited selection of inks and one of the joys of having a fountain pen is to be able to put in things like honey gold or fluorescent purple or whatever colors you want. And uh, if you're using the, uh, these single-use cartridges, you're pretty much limited to uh, black or blue. So um, there's uh, some fountain pens like uh, the Lamy have their own unique cartridges. And this one, the Lamy actually does have a selection of different colors. These ones are purple. So um, uh, with the, the converters we're, we're going to talk about here because um, that's the, when it comes to different types and colors of ink, that's the, uh, the most universal one that there is. There's also uh, pens that are siphon fed. They actually have a lever on them that draws the uh, ink up. I don't have one of those. I don't make those, uh, that style of pen. So uh, all the pens that I make here use the, uh, the piston type converter. And usually when I supply a pen, I provide the converter as well as uh, uh, one of these pre-filled cartridges. Okay, so the uh, converter simply plugs into the pen and then it has this piston that will force the ink down into the feed section. Okay, so that's the, uh, those are the basic parts of the, uh, of the pen. So let's take a look at the process to fill your fountain pen. So first and foremost, unless you really like to get your hands covered in ink, put on a pair of gloves. For some people, I think it's a, uh, a badge of honor to uh, walk around with ink-stained hands. Not for me, though. I, <laughs> I don't. So uh, yeah, gloves are a good idea. Now uh, to fill the pen, take the cap off, and then uh, we're going to remove the uh, barrel. That leaves us with the nib, the feed, and the converter. 
So um, we're going to talk about three different ways to fill a fountain pen. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, two of the more common methods, and then we're going to talk about the way I do it. So um, method one is take your ink. Now, before we even get into filling it, let's talk a little bit about ink. So with fountain pens, you want to make sure that you are buying actual fountain pen ink. There are other types of ink, India ink, there's uh, ink that is designed for dip pens, uh, ink that is designed to be brushed on, uh, there's different types of ink. So make sure you're getting a good quality fountain pen ink. Don't try to fill it with anything else, your pen will clog and it'll cause you a nightmare. So um, I do have some good, uh, uh, good quality ink here, and uh, now the first method for filling the fountain pen is you take your pen like this and you dip the whole nib down into the ink. So uh, let's say the nibs dip down into the bottle and then you turn the piston and as you pull the uh, piston back it will draw ink into the chamber. Okay, that's, uh, that's one method. Downside of that is your ink, uh, your uh, nib is now covered with ink. Everything is flooded with ink down on this end. It's, uh, you're going to blot it off with a uh, paper towel. Uh, it gets very, very messy doing it that way. And uh, I don't like to dip that end of my pen in the uh, ink. So that's option one. That's the, uh, the nib dip method. The next option is to take the converter, remove the uh, the nib and the feed off, just dip the converter into the ink, and then in the same way draw the ink back up. That avoids immersing the uh, the tip of the pen in ink. So uh, you now got ink in your converter. You can simply plug the converter in, and uh, then force a little bit of uh, ink into the feed. We'll talk about that in just a second. So uh, that's a little bit, a uh, little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner than the uh, nib dip method. The third method that I use is very simple and very clean. So take your converter off, bring the piston all the way down to the bottom, and then I use a syringe. So uh, now these are, uh, this is, um, these syringes are readily available on Amazon. Uh, they're sometimes referred to as hobby syringes. They have a needle on them that's called a blunt. And it's called a blunt because it's got a blunt tip. You can't poke yourself uh, with it. These blunts work perfect for our use. So uh, you can't poke yourself uh, very easily with them. So um, they work quite nicely. They also have a very large bore. So they move the ink quite readily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the syringe, I'm going to dip that down into the ink, and I'm going to drop, oh, not it doesn't take much, just drop a little bit of ink, that's even uh, more than I need. Then you're going to put the needle into the converter, all the way down to the bottom, and just fill the converter, just kind of to the neck, don't go too far with ink. Okay, so that converter is now ready to go. I can go ahead and put that onto the feed. Now, I've got ink now inside the converter, but the feed section is still empty. Now, if you're just refilling a pen that uh, had run low, that may not be an issue. But in this case, uh, my whole feed section is empty and I'm going to want to force a little bit of the ink into there. So I'm going to turn the piston and push and I'm going to watch really closely here if um, it's going to be difficult for you to see. I'll try to give you a close-up view. But right here in the uh, we've got all the uh, the fins on the feed section. I'm going to watch there really carefully until I start to see ink flowing into that part of the pen. And there, I can see the ink going in. There it is. Okay. 
So uh, there's now ink in that part. Now I can take a piece of paper and just try drawing it across a couple times and the ink starts to flow. If it's a little bit stubborn, it's not flowing right away, then push a little bit more ink. Now you've noticed I've lost a bit of ink because I've injected it in, into the feed. If I want, my feed is now uh, full of ink, I can detach the converter again. This part is optional. Bring the piston all the way down to the bottom and just top it up with a little bit more ink. Reattach and we're now ready to go. Slide on the barrel and um, slide on the cap. So that pen has been inked and uh, is ready to be used. So let's talk a little bit about using your fountain pen. So fountain pens are a are delicate. The nib on them is very thin and can easily be damaged. So you always want to keep your pen capped so that if it gets dropped, the uh, the nib doesn't get damaged. Now, if that does happen, be aware that many types of uh, pens, including uh, several of the ones that uh, I make here, uh, you can actually replace the nibs. So I have uh, replacement nibs. Actually, you can actually get different types of nibs, fine, uh, ex extra fine, bold, medium. And uh, so the nibs are often interchangeable. Now that varies from one type of pen to another, but uh, many of them are. So uh, you do want to protect that nib though. If you do have a pen that the nib is not replaceable uh, and the nib becomes damaged, then your your pen is, uh, is uh, either toast or uh, it's going to have to be repaired, which can be costly. You also want to store them nib side up. So uh, you don't want to store the pen nib side down because ink can easily spill, especially if it gets uh, if it gets jostled. Now, some people do say that storing your pen uh, nib side down keeps the pen flooded so that uh, it will not dry out, whereas storing it nib side up can uh, cause the pen to dry out, which is true. However, I would it's very easy to resolve a dried out pen. We'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, whereas um, if this pen is stored nib side down and it becomes flooded, then uh, all of a sudden you open it, you've got ink all over the place. So um, uh, better to store them nib side up. And uh, I actually store mine inside a prote uh, protective padded case so that uh, they're further protected from any damage. And uh, most importantly, when you're using a, pen, uh, a fountain pen, be aware that they are not the same as a ballpoint. So a uh, ballpoint pen uh, takes, you have to put pressure on the pen for the ball to roll. With the fountain pen, they take a very delicate touch. And that's one of the things that I love about the fountain pen is I can write for quite a while with a fountain pen without becoming fatigued because it takes such a delicate touch. So uh, you don't push on the fountain pen. You just write very lightly. The, the paper is just barely moving underneath the nib. So... Uh, what happens is if you give your fountain pen or let someone who's used to uh, using a ballpoint use your fountain pen and they push down, they can actually bend the nib and permanently damage it. So um, I recommend you um, keep your fountain pens for your use. Uh, don't lend them out to other people. Next, let's take a look at changing inks in your pen. And this is not something I would recommend. Uh, I tend to, when I, uh, when I get a new pen, 
I'll decide what ink, what color ink goes in that, and that's the color of ink that will remain in that pen for a long time to come. It is possible to change the ink, however. So uh, to do that, what you're going to do is to, um, first of all, you're going to drain the ink out of the converter. So uh, if this ink is, here's my blue and I want to change it to an orange, then uh, I'm not going to actually go through the process. But what I would do is I would uh, twist the piston and drain the blue ink back into uh, this container. But be aware when you do that, you've still got ink in the feed section. You've still got ink in the converter. So what I will do with the uh, now empty converter on the pen, I'll take a, uh, a container that's filled with, uh, with water. I'll dip this into the water and I'll draw water up into the converter. And then I'll go the other way. I'll twist and extract the water out of the converter. Then I'll dump it. Then I'll do it again. And I'll repeat this over and over and over and over again. And it does take a while. So uh, you want to do that until you get to the point where when you draw water into the converter, that the water is clear. Then you've gotten, gotten rid of all traces of ink in your pen. And be prepared, it does take a while. It's, uh, it's quite a chore to uh, clean out the feed section on your pen. It's not so bad if you're going from, like in this case, if the pen was previously loaded with uh, uh, with orange and I suddenly want to go to dark blue or black, it's uh, not as drastic a change. But if I want to go the other way, yeah, it's going to be a problem. So uh, ideally, decide what color ink you want in that pen and just leave it that way. Anytime you need to refill, it's no, it's not an issue. Take the converter off because it's the same color ink. Bring the piston all the way down to the bottom, top up the uh, converter, plug it back on, and flush some ink through the feed. You're good to go. So a pro common problem that can happen with fountain pens is when the pen is stored, and it's stored nib up, and the nib dries out. This pen is inked. It's uh, the converter is full. But if I try to use it, nothing happens. So what's happened is ink has evaporated and uh, and dried inside the uh, inside the feed section of the uh, of the uh, nib. So um, the way to resolve that is I'm going to. Turn the piston, and I'm going to force some ink into the fins, watching the fins closely, and there, starting to see some ink flowing. Okay, so now let's try it. There we go. If you've got a pen that's really dried out and not even that's working, then uh, just take the pen over to uh, a tap and just run a very fine stream of warm water just over the nib for oh just a few seconds. You'll see it flows with the uh, color of the ink. And then uh, once that's done, then just draw on some paper just to uh, get the uh, any traces of the water out and blot it with a paper towel. Make sure you're wearing gloves because it will blot up ink as well. So that's how you resolve a dried out nib. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found some information useful, maybe some tips or uh, give you a better understanding of how to use your fountain pen. If you've got any questions, if there's anything I didn't cover or anything you'd like some more clarification on, just leave a message down in the comments below or send me a direct message and I'll be more than happy to answer them. 
In the meantime, enjoy your new fountain pen. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.